Chapter 21 Preaching Even to the Dead It is written, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. The Bible plainly says that Christ preached to the spirits in prison after his death on the cross. We just need to believe what is stated in its literal sense, not interpreting it in our own way. Christ's great atonement on the cross was a blessing in heaven, on earth, and underground. In other words, the grace of Christ was proclaimed even to the spirits in prison who were moaning over their doom of destruction. The above verses seem to mean that Jesus preached only to the spirits of those who had died in the days of Noah. Actually, he proclaimed the good news that he destroyed the power of death to all the other spirits who sinned too. In regard to this, the prophet Isaiah wrote, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7, To free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. This prophecy finds its fulfillment in the Apostle Peter's statement. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, and preached to the spirits in prison. We can find the same meaning in the following verses written by Matthew. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Some say that the saints who were raised after Jesus' resurrection had a special resurrection. However, their resurrection was not a special one. All who were saved in the Old Testament were resurrected and entered the heavenly Jerusalem. To understand this more clearly, we need to study the prophecy concerning Jesus' resurrection. In Leviticus chapter 23, verses 10 through 16, is described the wave sheaf ceremony. The Israelites brought a sheaf of the first fruits to the priest, and he waved the sheaf before the Lord on the day when they started to reap their harvest. This was a shadow of things to come. The agricultural harvest in Old Testament times represented the spirits of the redeemed in New Testament times. Jesus was resurrected as the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep. After his resurrection, the spirits of many who had died in Old Testament times were also resurrected. By Jesus' sacrifice on the cross as the sin offering, those who were saved in the Old Testament times entered into perfect salvation, as it is written. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. The Old Testament saints were also redeemed through the cross of Jesus. No one could be resurrected until Jesus was resurrected, except for some special cases. After Jesus' resurrection, all the Old Testament saints were resurrected. Jesus was raised as the firstfruits of the spirits of those who had fallen asleep, like the firstfruits of the harvest in the Old Testament, as it is written. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who had fallen asleep. As soon as Jesus gave up his spirit on the cross, the tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. This occurred to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. After his triumph on the cross, Jesus appeared to the spirits who had suffered in prison for a long time and brought them good news of great joy. When he told them to receive the eternal gospel, how joyfully would they receive their Savior. Jesus opened the prison door 
so that they could be freed from the hands of Satan, Lucifer, the morning star, son of the dawn. How great and glorious is the Creator's plan of salvation for His children, born of His own Spirit. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. He never neglects even the smallest things. He governed and led His children before He came into the sinful world. He taught them while He was on earth and even in the spiritual world beyond the grave. He gives them joy by His mercy. Jesus does not neglect even a single soul. It is a principle that the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached even to the souls of those who have never heard the gospel and died since the creation of the world. If they were not given an opportunity to be saved, God would be unfair. However, God is always fair, and so is whatever He does. Some think that there is no forgiveness of sins after death. However, those who have lived according to their conscience and died without ever hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ will have a chance to hear it even in hell and be saved. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. There are two types of sins, both in this world and in the world to come. One is a forgivable sin, and the other is an unforgivable sin. Jesus distinguishes between the forgivable and unforgivable sins. In human history, there are an uncountable number of people who have died without having heard the gospel for thousands of years. Compared to the people who have heard the gospel and died, those who have had no chance to hear the gospel and died are innumerable. If those numerous people, especially good people, are all punished and destroyed in hell, who will be responsible for them? Man is unjust in this sinful world, but Christ is not. He has never provided an unfair way of salvation for the numerous souls. Christ, the owner of the heavens and the earth, and the dungeon, gives a chance to hear the gospel and be saved even to the spirits who have been locked up in the devil's prison for thousands of years.